stand at the door and you knock. If anyone opens, hears and opens, you'll come in and you will dine with them. We invite you, Lord, to come and sit at your place in the throne of our hearts as Lord, as King, as Master. Open up your words to us. Feed us with bread that is convenient for us, enough for us. Bread that is healing for your children. And we drink in of the wine of the joy of the Lord. Yes, my Lord, my Lord. That strength will come to Zion, to the church of Jesus Christ. Be magnified today, be glorified. Open our understanding to the scriptures. Help us to see Jesus. That in seeing Jesus, we may see the Father. I also ask, Lord, that you confirm your word today with miracles, with signs, with wonders following. In the name of Jesus. Let this word live mightily in us. Guide us. Guide your people, Lord. May we drink of fountains of living waters from you, Lord. I ask for the sick to be healed today, the oppressed to be delivered. Let this message take people to a higher place in God as the King in Jesus takes his place through the word by the Spirit in us. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus, name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Praise, the Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord Jesus a shout. Yes. Amen. Give the King. Give the King. The Lord of Lords. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Please be seated. Let's study God's word together today. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Yes, we bless his holy name. Yes. Praise the Lord. Now, this is a continuation of what we looked at last week. Uh, today we want to talk specifically about uh, when can Jesus comes in? When can Jesus comes in? When he comes to you? When can Jesus comes? Amen. Last week we looked at the fact that the Lord will come to us. Today we want to talk more about coming as a king. Are you with me? So it's a follow-up, it's a continuation. The Lord uh, comes to his people. Amen. But he comes as a king. Yes. Amen? Amen. What happens when he comes as a king? Praise the Lord. Very important message. Very important message. I'm going to give you uh, two quick verses in Matthew 6. Uh, just to show you, just refresh our hearts and our minds about the importance of the subject of the king coming into our lives. Matthew 6, verse 10, and then we'll look at verse 33. Praise the Lord. So again, last week, we saw this Flourish Church is with us today. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. We love yes, let's let's give them a <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> bless you. Amen. So we continue today. Matthew 6. Two two quick verses here. Uh, verse 10. Matthew 6, as uh, most of you know, those who don't know. Uh, this is where Jesus Christ taught us how to pray. This is where he gave the, uh, the pattern, a model. So you, you build your prayer 
based on the plan, the model, the pattern that he is given. Just like an architect will have renderings or drawings for a building or a structure. And people will come and build according to the structure. So Matthew 6, Jesus gave us a structure of prayer. Uh, but my subject is in prayer. So verse 10, Matthew 6 and verse 10, is what I want. But just so that you see that it's about prayer, and that it flows better, I read from 9. As I read, it will make sense to you why we start from 9. Matthew 6, 9. After this manner, therefore, pray. You see that? Mm -hmm. So, pray after this manner, this pattern, this model, this structure. And the reason why I'm pointing out that he's talking about a structure, a pattern, a model, the manner in which you do it is because some people think that what they're supposed to do is just repeat what he said here. Uh, when they repeat it, they repeat what they think is prayer here. They have prayed. No. Since it's the word of God, yes, you can repeat it. And you'd be blessed repeating it. Amen? Amen? Since it's God's word, you can memorize it, you can meditate on it. You can say it, you can use it as a prayer, and it's fine. Just as you can use any aspect of God's word in prayer, and it will be fine. Make sense to you? Yeah. yeah. But if all your prayer that you've been praying is just repeating this, you're not praying like you should be praying. Because he said, pray after this manner. Behave like this this man acts like this, you know. This boy walks like his father. His father walks this way, so he walks the same manner. This child behaves the same manner that he sees these people in the house behaving. They are mannerisms, you know. Americans have certain mannerisms. African Americans have certain mannerisms. You go to parts of Africa, they have certain mannerisms. You go to some parts of Asia, they have certain mannerisms. And so you can imitate, you can copy, you can follow the style. Mm -hmm. yes? Yes, yes? Okay. So he says, after this manner, you are to pray. Follow, build your prayer on this. I think everybody gets it. Because yep. we know traditionally, some people just repeat this. You know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And they think they're prayed. We haven't prayed. It's just the same as turn to any part of your Bible. You turn and you repeat it. It says, no difference. I could just turn anywhere and say, Zedekiah was one and 20 years old when he began to read it. Just same way as I'm reading this. And if I read about Zedekiah, it's not prayer. I'm just reading something that's written in the Bible. Do you understand that? Yep. A lot of people go to church and spend all their lifetime doing the same thing because grandma did it. Grandpa did it. And grandma can't be wrong. Mm -hmm. You know that? Grandma cannot be wrong. Don't ever say grandma is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it does not agree with the Bible, we have to change our ways. We have to amend our ways. In fact, you have to let the king come in and let the king tell you what you should do. Amen. Do you get it? Yeah. Because he's Lord, he's king. If he's Lord and he's king, then you know, you gotta do what he says. Because he himself says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I tell you? So he's Lord, really to the extent to which you are obedient to him. Amen. If someone is your boss and you never listen to the boss, well, they are not your boss, right? Yes? Okay. You know, it's it's like, uh, I'm gonna tease you a little bit. It's like uh, in the home of uh, Minister Renee and uh, uh, 
Deacon uh, uh, Minister Minister Oscar and Deacon Rene. You know, I'm just gonna tease them. You know, who's the boss? You know, Grandma or, or Grandpa? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> they just pointed. All right. <laughs> See, a boss. Uh, the boss because what they say is what goes, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, see the grandchildren know it. <laughs> All right, so Jesus says, why do you call me boss, boss? Why do you call me Lord or King? And you don't do what I tell you. So the extent to which I'm Lord is based on what? The extent to which you do what I say. Yes? yes. Amen? Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Should I come to the Emmanuel family? <laughs> let's, let's find who's boss. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, regarding prayer, Jesus says in Matthew 6, 9, and 10, after this manner, this manner, this model, this pattern, this structure, all right, make the dress based on the pattern. Build the house based on the plan. Amen. So if you never met the person who drew the plan, you can just have the plan and do it based on the plan, right? Okay, so this is the plan. After this plan, this man and this structure, you pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So the prayer structure is that you approach the Father. Amen. Your child is your father. You know where he is. He's in heaven. Hallowed be your name. That means worship. So the, the prayer has a structure. When you come, know that you're coming to your father. And come with worship. Amen. Yeah. Just like you see in some parts of the Bible, it says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Yeah. You see, entrance. Come that way with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. All right, so you, you come to God, you approach the King of Kings, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, with worship, adoration. You magnify Him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You get this? Let me just show you something. So you see it and you can learn it and repeat it. Pray that way. I can show you this. You just go to Acts chapter 4. Just, just sidebar. Just go up a little bit. Just go to Acts 4. Let me show you this. Acts 4. 24, 24. Tell me if you see that these people here are following the pattern, the plan, the manner in which he said prayer ought to be done, ought to be prayed, how we should pray. Let's see if they followed it. Acts 4, what, what did I just say? Acts 4, 24. 24, okay, 24. And when they have heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. Would you say they are praying? Yes. Yeah. Okay, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord. Florida, do you see their praying? <laughs> Amen? All right. <laughs> All social media. Okay, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, so now they're speaking. What do they say? Lord. Lord, thou art God, who has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is always in them. So what are they doing here? They say, Lord, you are God, and you have made the heavens and the earth and, and everything. What are they doing? They are exalting God. They are magnifying God. They're lifting him up. You see that? Yeah. So they are following the pattern the Lord Jesus taught them. So next time you pray, how do you start your prayer? 
the sky that based on however you want to call him, you know, Almighty God, Father, whatever. But, yeah. you know, he's your father. He is God. He's Lord. And you use words that express adoration, magnification, honor, and majesty, and glory. You know, sometimes by the time you are done worshiping, your problems become so small. <laughs> The fear just leaves and you feel all right. Amen. Yes. Everything's going to be all right. Somebody say everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Amen. When you worship him, things just kind of get all right. Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, praise God. Amen. When you go home, you can read Acts 4 and you can see, you, you glean more. It'll make more of an impact on your heart, your spirit when you see the circumstances under which they prayed the way they did. They've just been threatened, they've just been beaten by the religious leaders and been ordered not to preach or teach in the name of Jesus. And they turn and say, Lord, you are God. Amen. These people are not God. Mm -hmm. So next time somebody threatens your boss threatens you at work, you go to the bathroom you know, and you turn the fan on and anything that can make noise and drown your noise, you know, because you're going to be shouting there in that bathroom. <laughs> Amen. So you turn everything on that makes noise to mask, you know, your noise. And you go, Lord, you are God. Hallelujah. Amen. My boss is not God. <laughs> you are. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Got to be radical sometimes. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Spraying one time in an apartment. It's when I first came to America. And you know, some of the apartments, the walls are so thin, you make a little noise and people, people, I don't know what they use, like some broomstick or something, but they bang it up, you know, on the scene like, hey, you know. So, so I learned my lesson quickly that you don't make too much noise. But I just felt this one time, the enemy's trying to push me down, and I just needed to rise. I needed to shout. Yeah. Amen. Prayer is not always shouting, you know. You pray in your head. You know, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask him and all that you think about, Ephesians 3.20. Even what you're thinking, God can do it for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. But I just felt, you know, he's just trying to push me down. So I needed to come out of my skin. I just, my spirit needed to rise. But when I shout, somebody's going to bang on the, <laughs> you know, on the ceiling. So I put my face in the pillow, because that will muffle the, the sound. And I shouted. So I'm shouting. I need that mm -hmm. and power and all of that to come. My spirit, it's coming, but the pillow muffled the sound. Mm -hmm. I also went actually under the bed, not on the bed, but I went under the bed because wow. I really needed to shout. Yeah, so I went under the bed and put my face in the pillow. <laughs> Unfortunately, the person I was staying with came home and could hear some sounds and could not see me. <laughs> And they said, oh, man, this guy fasted and prayed. Now he's just become a spirit. Because <laughs> they could hear the sound. I was in the room, but they couldn't find me. Wow. And they didn't think to look under the bed. Because <laughs> who goes under the bed to pray? Said, oh, oh, this guy has just become a spirit. You know, <laughs> he, he lost his body. <laughs> no, I didn't lose my body. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Another time, it was a long time ago when I was a student uh, going to college in London. I, I don't know what it was I needed, maybe money. You know how students would need money. I don't know what it was, but it's a challenging time. And uh, I, I've noticed that the train, at certain time of the day, like in the afternoon, there's not a lot of people on the train, and the train makes a lot of noise. Mm -hmm. So I just bought a, a train ticket, return, round trip. It's cheaper, too. Off peak time is cheaper. I bought a train ticket. We got on the train, and me and the train. When the train went, <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> yeah, I pray 
it, I prayed my heart happy. Yes. Amen. It worked for me. Amen. So, praise God. I don't always pray that way, but yeah, sometimes when I just feel like something's trying to press me down, oh, I shout. Amen. I, I have me a good shout. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Notice too that in the winter time, a lot of people did not come to the parks. They wouldn't go to the park because it's cold. Mm -hmm. So that's where I would go to pray because I have the park to myself. I know that's right. <laughs> Amen. Now, you, if you know me and you know that I'm out of the park praying in the winter, you know that this guy needs a breakthrough because mm -hmm. me and winter we're not friends. <laughs> So, it's not like I'm talking about myself. I'm just give you examples, mm -hmm. things you can do to push your way through some challenging times. Amen. Give you examples to make it relatable, to make it human. Because, you know, pastors also are humans. They have problems. They have issues. Amen. Pastors, you know, bishops, they have challenges, you know. You didn't know that? We know. Yeah, they do, too. They do. So, sometimes, yeah, they got to shout it out. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, so you just learned how they pray here? Okay, please go back to Matthew 6. Matthew 6, verse 9 and 10. After this man and therefore pray, ye, our Father, word in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, exalt the name of the Lord. Now, notice something Jesus says you have to be interested in. I have to be interested in. We have to pray for. We have to call into being. It's this, verse 10. Verse 10, verse 10. Thy kingdom come. come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven amen. amen so let's read matthew 6 verse 10 maryland florida matthew 6 verse 10 i'm going to count to three on the count of three we all read matthew 6 verse one ten, ten. ten. okay please matthew 6 10 one two three please read Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Let's do it again. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Thy kingdom come. Jesus said, after this manner, this model, this plan, have a strategy. Pray this way. Pray God's kingdom to come into your life. Pray for it. Pray for it. Very often when the Lord tells you to do something, it should suggest to you that if you don't pray for God's kingdom to come, a different kingdom or another kingdom will try to come or stay. Woo! You can't just live, live in your life doing college, doing marriage, doing business, doing whatever, and not praying for God's kingdom to come. Because if you don't pray for God's kingdom to come into that situation, into that part of your life, your health, your spirit, your soul, whatever, some other kingdom will try to move in. Amen. 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 Jesus doesn't talk just because he does, you know, he, he, you know, he, he has a whole lot of time and nothing to do, so he just wants to fill up space. No. Whatever he says is for a reason, is for a purpose. Amen. 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 If, you, if God's will is not being done, somebody's will is being done. Amen. Which is not the best for you. If it is not God's will, somebody's will is being done. The church has to learn this. Believers have to learn this. If it is not God's will ruling in your family, somebody's will is ruling. Maybe an abuser's will, making everybody afraid. Domestic violence, that's not God's will, is it? No. It's not. Domestic violence is not God's will. How many in peace? That's God's will. Yes? yes? You have to be praying for God's will to be done. If you don't, someone's will will move in. I'm telling you. Of course, you as Christians, you know, we know that the devil's will will move in. 
But we don't want that. We want God's will. How many want God's will for their lives? Amen. 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 You want God's will. So you pray for it. Praise the Lord. I pray, I speak God's will over this business. This business shall prosper. We know that promotion comes from God. So I speak promotion into my career. In Jesus, don't be silent. He said, pray for it. Amen. Did you see it? Or am I the only person who sees some of these things? Amen. He said, pray for this. Amen. Oh, well, God, if God wants to give it to me, God will give it to me. Hey! Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Reinhard Bonke, the evangelist, he says, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> if it is God's will, God will give it to you. And God just said, pray for it. Evidently, you have a part to play in God's will being done in your life. Right. He said, pray for it. Well, I don't know. I don't know what God's will is in this matter. If he says, pray for his will, then the assumption is that you know. Hallelujah. How many Christians have you met who are always saying, I don't know God's will. Pastor, aha, let me deal with this one. All of you who go around asking people, do you have a word from God for me? What is wrong with you? You, you don't like talking to God? You, are, you and him, you, you don't visit each other. You are loggerheads. You are not friends. Why? How is it that you come to me asking me what God has told me concerning you? And it's your life, and you're expecting me to know about your life? When I tell you, you don't even do it, so why are you asking me? <laughs> People do that all the time. Do you, do you have a word from God for me? Why? Is he, is he mad at you? <laughs> He's not talking to you? <laughs> so let's cut that out. Let's cut that out. I know you don't do that here, but I have to teach you know, amen. 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 I have to teach it. Praise God. Sometimes somebody's just starting out as a believer, or somebody's being told the wrong thing by someone else. So they need to learn. Amen. amen. There are too many Christians today who are living their lives based on what prophets are telling them. Amen. You know, you know that. You know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. And it's not stopping. And their life is messed up because they're not hearing from God for themselves. That's amen. right. It's wrong. Jesus says that I pray that God's kingdom will come and pray that his will will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Then the suggestion here is, the assumption here is that you know God's will. Come on, church. You know. You must know. <laughs> Amen. Also, he's telling us that it could be that the will is not happening. That is why you should be praying for it. Because if it was happening, he wouldn't tell you to pray for it. Amen. Mr. Sherman, do you get this? Mm -hmm. He said, he said, pray this. That kingdom come. That means it hasn't come. If it has come, why pray for it? <laughs> he says, pray thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. As for God's will in heaven, that's settled. Amen. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It's settled. There's, there's no confusion there. Eh? No thief breaking in to steal. No moth corrupting. There's no, you know there's no corruption in heaven. But there is. On, in, you know, on Capitol Hill. You thought I was going to say it's in Africa. Uh, I got you there. It's on Capitol Hill. Today, today I leave Africa alone. Ah, hallelujah. They say the most corrupt country is Nigeria. No, it's not Nigeria. It's America. It's legalized. Capitol Hill. It's a lot more money. America is the richest country in the world. It is. Do you know that? <laughs> so they just legalized corruption. It's called lobbying. And so there's more. There's more money there than there is in Nigeria. It's not Nigeria. Leave Nigeria alone. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. They do that, you never want to go to visit Africa. <coughs> I would take 
all of those injections before I go. No, you don't. You don't have to take any injections. Just, just get anti-malaria tablets. Once a week. If you're going to be there for four weeks, you start taking it two weeks before you go. Once a week, pop it. One week. Next week, you pop one. Or I will forget. You won't forget. You have a phone. Put a reminder on your phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop making excuses. Amen. Will I come back? Don't I come back whenever I go? <laughs> <laughs> like you say, I've been knowing you. You've been knowing me. <laughs> don't be for how many years. Don't I ever don't I come back each time I go? <laughs> I come back fresh. Mm -hmm. More handsome, rested, happier. <laughs> There's less rest in that. There's less stress in Africa than there is here. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Oh yeah. That's why we always come back looking better, happier, more relaxed. Uh huh. Go. Go. But please come. Where is? I thought I saw you. Yes. Please, excuse me, Sir Elder Maxwell. I just said, please come. Sir, please come. Please. Yeah, you are helping me preach today. Please come. Amen. He said, oh, man. Please come. Please, please come. Hallelujah. This is not planned. Everybody, Florida is not planned. Social media is not planned. He says, okay, Frank, what is he going to do to me? No, not to you. I try to help people. <laughs> You <laughs> wait, I know, I know. I've, I've known you for at least 30 years. I'm trying to figure out based on our kids' age. You know, ages, yeah. So it's, 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 you know, longer than that. But let's just say 30. It's, I mean, it's more. This man takes groups of people on tour to Africa. Africa, you know. Can I spell it for you? Africa, the continent of Africa has a lot of countries. Africa is not a country, it's a continent. This man, known him for over 30 years, has been taking people to, at least I know South Africa, Ghana, Gambia. Yeah, help me out. Just, just help me out. Zimbabwe, Uganda, um, Rwanda, Egypt, Morocco, Ghana. And Ghana. So, yeah. Ghana, say Ghana twice. <laughs> Ghana, Ghana. And uh, Senegal. Senegal. Amen. Uh, do you have a microphone? I do not. Yeah, this is, this is mine. We'll give you one. T today, we're, we are delivering people. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Is this on? Yeah, thank you. Praise God. We didn't plan this. I'm not trying to plan. Actually, you, you, you know something called tithes, right? <laughs> yes. When, when you get uh, a lot of people through this, <laughs> I'll remember. You remember. Good. Okay. okay. Give to God. Amen. All right. But anyway, anyway. Uh, he's been taking people. They go to. Ghana, Ghana, they go to Ghana and Ghana, South Africa, Gambia, Uganda, all the places he said, Zimbabwe, Rwanda, Kenya, Morocco, Senegal, oh, so you all remember, good. Yeah, yeah. Over 30 years and he brings them back. Some of the people you take, uh, I know you take like, people from churches, you take individuals, but you also take people from schools like colleges, you know. So just, I just want people to know, forgive me for doing this, I want people to know that Africans are not like some weird, crazy people swinging on trees. We are human like you all. We are natural like everybody. Amen. 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 You know, wow. 
You need to travel. You just need to travel and see for yourself. Don't believe everything. For once, I'm going to agree with Trump. Fake news. Mm. For once, I'm going to agree with him. Don't <laughs> believe the fake news that there's something wrong with Africa. There's nothing wrong with black people. Black people are not cursed. So, some people even believe, excuse me, I'm sorry I, I'm, I'm doing this to you and have you here, but this is important to me. It was not part of my message. But, but uh, you know, some, some, the devil has messed humanity up. Satan has messed us up. God created us in his image and his likeness. Amen. And we have allowed the devil to turn us against each other. That's right. People kill people for no reason. That's right. I mean, the madness must stop. Amen. Amen. And a lot of it starts with this. People don't appreciate people That's for right. being created by God. God says, the person that he created in his image, you are not supposed to curse. Because when you do that, you have attacked the image of God. Yet there are Christians who disparage black people who are also created in the image of God. You call yourself a Christian, you have to change. Amen. Because you have allowed the will of the devil to control you. You've allowed another king and another spirit to move into your mind and your heart. Mm -hmm. And that needs to change. Amen. Jesus doesn't want to just come into your life and save you. And then you just live anyhow you want and keep your old racist, bigoted ideas. No, your mind has to be renewed. You have to be transformed. Amen. 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 So please tell me some of the people, the groups, at least just tell me from the universities, some of the colleges, like you, t you took a, a group of people from, uh, from, from America to Africa and you brought them back. You brought them back. Yes. <laughs> some chose to live there though. So, oh, is this, is this, is this Michael? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, can hear him. Okay. okay. So yes, please. Okay. Um, the, the schools, the first. latest group I'm taking in December, it's um, Howard University. Amen. Yeah. Howard University, Woo! like the one in Washington DC, Howard? Yes. <laughs> this same Howard, yeah. that has been around for Ever. a long time, Howard. Yeah, we've been going since, wait, wait a minute, Let, no, we, let's, let's do this, praise God. I heard someone else, Beverly, please, please come, no, 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 please, oh, hallelujah, please come. Oh, you don't want to be on camera? Okay, then give me the date. Howard has been, Howard has been since the 1800s. So this is the same Howard. And you, 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 you took people, and you're taking a group from Howard to Africa. Yes. Sir, where in Africa did they go? Um, in December, we're going to Ghana, I mean, uh, South Africa. But in May, we're going to Ghana with 80 students. 80 wow. students from Howard? Howard, yeah. Oh, wow. God bless you. God bless you. And God we bless went you. to Rwanda recently. And um, June, we're going to um, Ethiopia for the first time. Oh. Amen. Amen. Is he on camera? I, I'm just, I'm, oh, you're going to Ethiopia in June? Yes. Wonderful. Wow, praise God. Praise God. What are the schools? And this is a, actually a special group. They have to be at least 3.5 to go on this wow. group. Amen. It's called Young African American Leadership Initiative. Amen. Okay. Woo! Oh, they have to have a great, great point average of 3.5 yeah, to be able to go on this group. From Howard? Yes. You mean black people are also smart? Yeah. I mean, like smart up here. Not, not just smart. football. No, not just basketball. And do you actually realize that it takes being smart to <clears throat> play basketball? You see, there's, I see a lot of things that Satan is doing to humanity that must stop. Mm -hmm. You know, people think that physical activity, you know, when you do physical activity by contest and you come up on top, 
you know, it's just physical and you don't use your mind. I hear it sometimes when they're playing tennis. You hear they'll say Serena. Is this Serena? Yeah. Yeah. There's a there are two sisters. Yeah. Okay, the younger one. They'll say she's very physical. Uh, you hear the commentators, she's very physical, very athletic, uh, but you can see her tensing up. And at this point, it needs a lot of mind power. No, they don't say mind power. Mental. 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 Yeah. And I'm like, what? See, and they're trying to suggest that she has physical power, but not mental power. And I'm, and I'm like, and I want to scream at the TV. I'm like, what is wrong with you? And they keep saying this. And keep saying that. When I first came to this country in 1986, it wasn't until I think 89, is it 89, that Redskins had Doug Williams yeah. as the quarterback. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he won a Super Bowl. Yeah. His leg was broken. He won yeah. the Super Bowl. They used to say that black people didn't have the, the yeah. mind, the mm -hmm. mental yeah. acumen, the mental, I believe was that, the mental capacity to lead because a quarterback, he quarters the thing. You know, I mean, why do, why, why? It's that we are allowing the devil to destroy the human race. And that must stop, especially when you have Christians who remain racist. It is inexcusable for born again believers to have a spirit of hatred towards a white person or a black person or an Asian or so. You can't do that if you claim that God lives in you. For Amen. God is love. Amen. I mean, it's sometimes I'm like, you know what? If we just go to play around and not make him Lord, let's just stop all this. Let, let's stop all this. Stop all this Christianity. Stop acting it. Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I tell you? Amen. This man has been taking people to different African countries. I've been for 30 years. Whenever they go, they come back. Please, when you go, you come back. Amen. You're not going to die. You come back. And if you want to know, all the Ebola and the viruses, they all start from here. They all start from Africa. Amen. Thank you, sir. I bless my kids. Amen. Next time you, you tell us more. Thank you so much. Let's give him a hand. Amen. The viruses are manufactured in laboratories here, in labs. What you know, I know. Yeah. You're not better than me. Amen. Amen. Tell me, just because I'm black, I'm not smart. Came to America alone. Six months later, my wife joined me. We came from London, Ghana, through London to America. She's been able to put four kids through university. Amen. In these United States. Three of them in what they call in America, Ivy League. Amen. And you want to tell me we're not smart? Don't let anybody put you down because you're a woman, because you're black, or because you don't have, you're not super wealthy. Or be, no, you were created in the image and in the likeness of the living God. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Your value is not based on how much money you have. Your value is not based on the color of your skin. Your value is based on being created in the image and the likeness of the living God. Amen. 
don't allow the devil to move into your mind and your heart and turn you, occupy real estate, spiritual real estate in your soul and your spirit where God is supposed to be and leave hatred there. We're driving to church. I don't know what started it, but my wife tells me maybe we went under an overpass or what, what, what even got her thinking about it. And she just started telling me about how some last week some kid stood on an overpass and dropped a, a brick on, on somebody's car. People, people go, go to schools and shoot children. Why? We have to value human beings. Start teaching your children, value people, value people. They are created by God for a purpose in his image, in his likeness. Don't touch that which God made in his image. When some Amalekite, I think it was an Amalekite, came and told David, you know, Saul asked me to kill him. I did it. Well, he thought, you know, because Saul did not like David and had been pursuing David to try to kill him, he figured David would be happy about it. David said, how dare you? How dare you raise your hand against the anointed of God? If Saul has a problem, it is between God and Saul. That's right. But don't you dare touch the Lord's anointed. And by the way, let me teach you God's people. That scripture is used in reference to all God's people. Touch not mine anointed. It's a reference to all of God's people. We are all God's people. Whether you sit in the pew or you stand behind the pulpit, we are all God's people. And we are all anointed by God. Amen. 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 If you want references, you just check it out yourself. 1 John 2 verse 20 and 1 John 2 verse 27. We are all anointed by God. Amen. All of us. Amen. I'm born again believers, of course, talking about. Amen. Amen. Please, today, let Jesus Christ come in as king, as boss. And what you used to do that was wrong, do it no more. Amen. Do it no more. Amen. After I taught last week, when the king comes in, he gave me three examples to give you for those who were with us in the message. There was the woman of Samaria in John 4. She had married five times, if you remember, and was in a sixth relationship this time not married to the guy jesus went through her town for her for her it appears that the women in the town didn't like her you can i just leave it all up to your own imagination as to why but anyway <laughs> I don't know how to admit something very special about her because the guys in the town didn't seem to stay away from her married one time, second time third time, fourth time, fifth time I bet you some girl in that town who is not yet married wants to be married is saying how come Anyway, because we know she used to go to the well in the afternoon to fetch water. Mm -hmm. When she knew nobody would be there. Mm -hmm. Because the girls would go to fetch water early in the morning or late in the evening when it's cool. You don't go in the heat of the day to fetch water. All right, so she didn't want to socialize with them because they won't socialize with her. And she seemed to have a lot of influence actually with her men. Because after she saw that Jesus was the Messiah, she went to the town and told the men, come, follow me. And would you know, the guys followed her. That's a woman of influence. <laughs> so come, 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 let's go out to the well. Come meet a man. 
You guys think you're a man? Come. Come. Let me show you a man. First time in my life, I met a man who did not take advantage of me. Even though I was vulnerable before him. He knew everything about me. He said, come, come. You think you're a man? Come. And the man followed her. Read it later when you go home. I taught it last week, John 4. And they came and listened to Jesus. And they believed in Jesus. And you can tell, too, that that had some, there was something going on between how the man felt towards her. Because later on, they told her, okay, now we've heard him for ourselves. We don't believe him just because you told us. <laughs> you see, guys, guys and girls, you know. <laughs> Posturing for position. Now, I don't, we don't believe just because you told us. We heard for ourselves. You know, guys have to be guys, you know. Guys have to, they have to have the last word, the final word. Let me tell you guys, you will never win. You can never have that final word. Let it go. Because <laughs> she will have that final word. <laughs> we found out today that grandchildren said, Grandma is boss. Yeah. I remember when the kids were little, one day they said, you know, inside the house, mom is boss. Outside the house, dad is. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, these kids, <laughs> they have a way of seeing things, you know. <laughs> when they're hungry, they go to mom. You need something, you go to mom. So it's like, yeah, mom's boss. <laughs> dad puts the trash out and he does the wrong. He's boss. <laughs> Over the lawn. That's America, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah baby. That's America, baby. Yeah. <laughs> what was I <that> saying? <laughs> What's that? The woman of the world. Thank you. Well, okay. So anyway, this woman says to the guys, "Come see this man." And they came and they believed in Jesus Christ. And I just like their influence. And Jesus changed her life. Completely changed her life. Salvation just moved in. Changed her life. Praise God. Praise God. And that's what he wants to do for us. Amen. Praise God. The other person we saw last week was in John 5. This is a man at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus yeah. comes to me and says, will you be made whole? Will you, will you allow me to help you? It's like Jesus saying to America, will you let me heal you of racism? Mm. <laughs> Seriously. In the church. I, I'm not talking to the world. I'm talking to the church. Born again. People who claim that they are born again. They love Jesus Christ. <laughs> Years ago, there was this pastor in Tulsa. He is part of the faith movement. This is word of faith. This is word people. People who claim they know the word. People who claim they know the word. He said he would not let. He's white. He said he would not let his little daughter, you know, go with black boys. You, you, you can't even open your mouth to say that. Somebody like that wants to come to Africa as a missionary. Please don't come. We don't want your spirit. Don't want that spirit. Because <laughs> until I left Africa, I was not black. I was a person. In America, everything is color. Man, it is, it is stifling. It is restrictive. You don't even get to know people. Love them for who they are. Get to know them for who they are. Everything, you let the color stop you. She was, until, until I left Africa, I did not know I was black. I didn't think in terms of color. I'm a person, human. One of my good friends, been friends for about 30 years, I told him that he's African American. He, he could not get it, what I was saying. He couldn't get it. Why? Because like my children, he was born here, he grew up here, color, 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 color is everything. So that's what he knew. And when I told him that, He's like, man, I, 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 don't, I don't get what you're saying. Can you, can you imagine? It is bondage. It's a serious bondage. Let me show, give you, please, I beg of you, I plead with you. Brother Keith, can you come with your wife, Sister Edith? Please come. Please come.
today in my church? Hmm. People are like, Pastor, if you're going to call us on camera, make sure you tell us in advance so we can come really decked out. You, know? and you are handsome. You are handsome. You're precious. Please come. Thank you, sir. Can, can you just hold hands? Thank you. Look, look at these two beautiful people. Yes. Two beautiful people. You know, love. God is love. Amen. Can you imagine that you, you can tell them, we don't want you to go together? Mm. Because of the color of your skin. I mean, just let's stop for a moment. Are you mad? Are you, are you really all right in your mind? I'm talking to believers, I'm not talking to unbelievers. I'm addressing born again believers. You say that Jesus Christ is your Lord. And you stand in your pulpit. Who sent me? Somebody sent me that on WhatsApp. There's another preacher recently. He was so angry. Why, man? He's so angry. He said, don't bring me a black boy. I will marry you. And the people in the church say amen to that. Hmm. You go to some of these places, the place is packed. Hmm. You go to heaven, you say, well, we had a packed congregation. God says, no, no, no. You had a, a congregation of racist people. You're not my spirit. I salute you, sir. Can I hug your husband? Yes, please, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, all you people out there. Uh, if your pastors tell you that if you meet somebody of a different race, they won't marry you, World Missions Ministries, come. I will do it, and I will bless you, and you'll be blessed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You'll be blessed. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Amen. <laughs> We'll continue next week. <laughs> Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to change. When the king comes in, he wants to be boss. He wants to be Lord. Praise the Lord. Please turn to Matthew 6, 33, and I'll tell you this. In the second example uh, we saw last week from John chapter 5, and please go home and read these things. Uh, the man at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus Christ uh, told him to rise up, take up his mat, and walk. And I shared with you last week that the mat represented something that he had created that made him comfortable, that had caused him to settle instead of rising. You understand? So anything that makes you settle for less than what God has for you, it's a different spirit from God's spirit. It's a different kingdom that's moving in. And you have to drive that kingdom out. Did you get it? You have to put, you have to rise and shine. Mm -hmm. Whatever wants to keep you down is not of God. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jesus said, a city that is set on a hill. Yeah, you are a city set on a hill. Amen. I don't know where this man got it from, former president, you know, he passed away, uh, but I heard him quote it, you know, said uh, America is a shining city on the hill. That's from scripture. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not America, it's the body of Christ. Amen. America is a great nation among the nations of the world, mm -hmm. the richest, the most powerful nation right now, yes. But that scripture is about born again believers. A shining city. Amen. So anything that wants to change that, you must resist it. From within you, you must oppose it. You must pray against it and pray that God's kingdom rather will come in. You understand this? Okay, so finally about the man in John 5. Jesus healed him. Jesus healed him. And please notice everybody. Jesus healed him. But after Jesus healed him, the Lord said to him, everybody, Please pay attention. The Lord said to me, John 5, go and sin no more. Watch this. 
go and sin no more, lest a worse thing come on you. So after the Lord heals you, the Lord wants to make sure that his will, his kingdom, rules in your heart and your mind. There's a transformation, a renewal, a change of mindset. So that the devil will not put you in prison anymore. Amen. There has to be a transformation. Let me find a verse for you. We looked at it last week, John 5. Thank you, Jesus. John 5, verse 14. John 5, verse 14. Afterward, Jesus finds him in the temple and says to him. So let's say that the temple, that's church. That's right here. So now, after he saved you, now he's found you in church. And he's telling you today. He says, behold, you are made whole. Sin no more. Lest what? A worse thing. A worse thing come unto you. Does everybody see this? Mm -hmm. You have the power to keep the enemy away from putting you in bondage. You have the power. Jesus empowered. Jesus says, don't sin anymore. Amen. It's not like, well, I just saved you so you can do whatever you want. You understand this? Yes. Let me give you another one. You're in John, right? Is it John 5? Yes. Okay, just skip to John 8. Let me show you another place where Jesus wants his lordship to manifest. John 8. Just a quick one. Verse 7. Verse 7. John 8, verse 7. This is a quick one. This is a story of the woman caught, supposedly caught in the act of adultery. John 8, verse, what did I say? Verse yes, 7. Right. So when they, they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Right? Yes. He again stooped down and wrote on the ground. And when they heard it, being convicted, convicted by their own conscience, <laughs> Today, we don't even have Christians, pastors, convicted about racism, bigotry in the church. Maybe you need to go on again. Again, I'm telling you, the church can change this racism in America. Yes. Amen. Didn't Jesus say that by your love, they would know that yes. you are my disciples? Mm -hmm. So where's the love? Mm -hmm. Where's the love? Well, we can even dare put on the marquee in front of our church. This, this people are not welcome here. It was on social media. It was a church. It put it, it, put it on the marquee. If, what kind of bondage is this? I mean, what, what is it? Superiority complex? Inferiority complex? demonic bondage? What is this thing? Anyway. Uh, verse 9. And they which heard it, they be committed by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest. The Bible is very funny, very interesting. Begin at the eldest. Why do you think he says begin at the eldest? Because the longer you stay on earth, the more sins you accumulate. It is only by God's grace that we are saved. That's as it begin at the eldest, they left. <clears throat> Even to the last. And Jesus was left alone, the woman standing in the midst. And Jesus lifted up himself, verse 10, verse 10. I want you to notice verse 10. Saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are your accusers? Has no man condemned thee? Verse 11. She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Let's read that part again. Verse 11, Jesus' part, the red, the part in red. 
Jesus said unto her, one, two, three, everybody read, Florida read. Jesus said to her, John 8, 11. What did Jesus say? Neither, Neither do I, do I thee. condemn thee. Go, Go and sin no more. And sin no more. Amen. This part is the Lordship. I don't condemn you. I have saved you. I just, he just saved, him, saved her from death, from being stoned to death, right? Everybody gets this? I just saved you. Just like back in John 5, I just healed you. But I'm telling you, there's a kingdom that I've been working in your life to keep you crippled, to keep you bound. Don't allow it to come in because it will take you back, not only back to where you were before I saved you, healed you, delivered you, but it will put you in a greater part of Satan's bondage. Yes, it would be worse than the former. You understand spiritual things? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Letting the king come in, ladies and gentlemen, is very important. Yeah. You start any venture, you say, Lord, you guide me. You guide me. Teach me. Right. Mm -hmm. How do yeah. I raise this child? How do I do this marriage thing? How do I do this church thing? Whatever. Lord, you teach me. Right. Amen. Be my guide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he comes in, he comes in to give you his word. Yeah. And he comes in with the spirit to guide you. Yeah. And he will guide you. Yeah. He'll guide you in the morning time. Yeah. Before you wake up, his spirit will be whispering things to you. He'll give you a word to carry you through the day. Very, very important that you go to bed. The final thing on your mind before you go to bed is thinking about Jesus. That's right. And then you, you don't even remember when you slept. And then you wake up and there's a word in your spirit to keep you for the day. That's right. Let him come in as king. Yes. I'm going to show you this picture. Give me Song of Solomon 3 and verse 6. Let me show you when he comes in. Song of Solomon 3 verse 6. I already said when he comes in, he comes in with his word. He comes in by his spirit. That's right. Song of Solomon Yes, 3 and verse 6. Who is this that comes? So he's coming, right? Last week, the Lord comes. But today, he comes as what? King. You understanding this? Okay. Who is he that comes out of the what? Wilderness. wilderness. Where is he coming from? Wilderness. The wilderness. And how does he come? Please read it. Hallelujah. When the Lord comes, how does he come? He comes as what? Pillars like pillars of smoke. I'm going to explain it. But before I explain from the word, you just look at the picture. Look at the imagery yourself. Just look at the, the picture he's drawing or painting for you. Everybody follows this? Okay. It's talking about the Lord coming. Okay, But when he comes, how does he come? He comes as what? Well. How does he come out of the wilderness? Like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and frankincense. You know he's talking about the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the myrrh for his death, crucifixion, death, burial. Mm. The frankincense, you know he's talking about the Lord. Remember the, the, the wise men from the east? They brought him what? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. All right? Gold speaks of divinity. And obviously, practically, too, that his parents needed some money to take him quickly out of Israel to hide in Egypt. If Africa was so bad, God would not send his own son to Egypt, Africa. Mm -hmm. I'm preaching good. I know, I know that. I, I like that myself. I caught something there. I like that. Amen. If you don't think it's good, I don't care. I, I, I just like it myself. So, all right, don't worry about it. Praise God. All right, with all powders of the merchant. But let me show you. You don't have to take what I'm saying. Let me show you that it's really how the Lord comes. What he shows you, showed you here is actually taking you back 
to when God delivered the people of Israel from Egypt, bringing them into the promised land, the way the Lord guided them, the way the Lord was with them. That's the picture he's taking the reader's mind back to. Yeah, I'm going to show that to you. So again, look at this. Who is this that comes? Somebody is coming. How does he come? He's out of where? The wilderness. His coming is like what? Pillars of smoke. So let's go to Exodus 13. No, let's do, no, let's do Exodus 16 first. Come to Exodus 16, verse 10. Let's look at his coming. Tell me if you, if you think this is really the Lord. The Lord will come in. Exodus 16 and verse what? Yeah. 10. And it came to pass as Aaron spoke unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel that they looked, everybody, they looked toward where? Wilderness. They looked toward where? Wilderness. The wilderness. Wilderness. Where is wilderness? Right there. Toward the wilderness. And behold, what? The glory, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Who is he that comes? Go back to Song of Solomon 3 and 6. Let's flip back. I wish we had side by side. Look at it. Who is he that comes out of the what? Wilderness. wilderness. Back in Exodus, they saw him coming from where? The, the wilderness. wilderness. Song of Solomon, he comes as what? Pillars of smoke. Let's go back to Exodus 16, 10, please. And they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the what? Glory. The glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Amen. Amen. And when he comes, he comes with what? Verse, verse 11. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, when he comes, he comes with his word. When Jesus healed the man at the pool, Jesus came with his word. Amen. Amen. Sin no more. Don't open any door. You have been delivered and translated from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. There is something called a kingdom of darkness. Colossians 1.13 and we've been delivered from it. You are now in the kingdom of God's dear son. Your spirit belongs to Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, your soul belongs to Jesus. Your body belongs to Jesus. And I stand here to declare that the king has come in. Amen. Who is the king of glory? Jesus. Jesus Christ. So open the gates of your life. Open the gates of your mind. Open it. Open the gates of your spirit. Where you have closed up to the healing graces of the living God. Where you've closed up to the transformative power of the Holy Spirit. Open up. Because some of us are too hard. We work against ourselves. I shall not, I shall not be moved. Because this is what I believe. But what you believe is contrary to God's word. You know, if I keep walking this way. And I bang into this. And I bang into this. And I keep saying I'm right. Seriously. Something. Am I not very proud? Or I am. You know. I, will, I don't want to say it. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom. Of his dear son. You are not bound. You are free. Jesus said to the man. Go and sin no more. Otherwise what? A worse thing will come upon you. Satan puts sicknesses on people sometimes. Through sin that they are committing. According to Jesus. I am not making this up. We saw it. In fact, sometimes in some sick, not all, but in some sickness situations, you actually have to cast out a demon. It is not praying for healing that will make the person healed. When we teach like in Bible college, we teach the course on ministry of healing, we teach people this. 
Most of you know it. Those of you in America who have heard about T.D. Jakes, you know, Bishop T.D. Jakes. I know this well, Bishop. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Respond. Give me some. You know. Right? Okay. Okay. Do you remember? Get ready, get ready, get ready. Okay. Do you remember woman thou art? Ah, thank you. Do you know that it's not Brother Jakes who started that? Saying that. Who said, who first said it? Jesus. Jesus. And when Jesus said, woman, thou art loosed, the woman had what you would call, I'm not a medical doctor, but they would call, I don't know what they call it, but it was some curvature of her spine. You know, there's some back problem, so she could, not every back problem is a demonic thing. Please, please, all right? If you go without, you know, stretching, and you go throw your back out, that's not a demon. Don't cast anything out. <laughs> Just go and put some heating something stretch. on it and heal it and warm it up and then stretch it. You understand that? Yeah. Okay. But this woman is kind of like this. In the synagogue for like 18 years, she can't raise herself up. You go to the doctor, the doctor will give it a name. Osteoporosis. Autodontal, no, dental is teeth. Okay, let me. Oh, I, something ISIS. I don't mean terrorists, but yeah. any ISIS means disease. <laughs> so they'll call it a name. But the name of Jesus is above every name. Amen. I said the name of Jesus yeah. is above every name. Amen. So this woman could not straighten herself. Jesus said to the woman, Woman, thou art loosed from this bondage. And in Luke 13, Jesus said, this woman has been bound by Satan. So some sicknesses are satanic bondage. But how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, that he went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed of the devil. Whatever kingdom has been ruling in your life, I come to tell you today, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are free. Why? The king has come. Hallelujah. So open the gates and let the king of glory come in. Yeah. Who is this king of glory? The Lord Most High, Jesus Christ. He comes as pillars of smoke. Stood there between Egypt, the Egyptians, and the Israelites. Fire on one side and the Egyptians could not attack the Israelites. Even in your sleep, the Lord is watching over you. He never slumbers. Don't believe false people who tell you that because of ancestral spirits or family altars, you can't prosper, you cannot. No, 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 no. You have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. And you are now in the kingdom of his dear son. The king of kings, the Lord of lords is watching over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How does he come? I showed it to you. He comes as pillars of smoke and he comes speaking his word. It's right there. You will see it. Right there. In Exodus 16, when he came as pillars of the cloud standing there, the Lord spoke. But not only that he spoke, he actually gave them something that later on he told us, this is equal to my word. He gave them what? He gave them the manna. If you look at verse Verse 15. And when the children, Exodus 16, 15. When the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, it is manna. For they did not know what it was. And Moses said unto them, this is the bread which the Lord has given to you to eat. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. This is a revelation that when I come, I come with my word. Amen. Did you just catch it? Did you catch it? Yes. Amen. Within this, he's teaching us it's not just the bread, the manna he gave them, but the true bread that came from heaven, the word of God. Amen. Amen. The final picture is in Exodus 13, verse 21. Exodus 13, verse 21. How does the Lord come? Verse 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a what? Cloud. Cloud. To lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. 
This is the guiding presence of the Lord. Who has been sent to guide us? The Holy Spirit. How does the Lord come? He comes by his word. How does the Lord come? He comes by his spirit. And whenever there's a coming together, a marriage, a union of the word and the spirit, there are miracles. Amen. When the word and the spirit come together, there's creation, the miracles. Genesis 1, there was chaos, there was darkness on the face of the deep. And the spirit of the Lord moved on the surface of the waters. And God said, Amen. the spirit moved, God said. And things came to pass. Amen. Healing is yours today. Amen. You are loose today. You are free today. Deliverance is yours today. Why? The king has come in. Amen. He said what happened in the past will not control you anymore. Amen. We, we saw it in the scriptures. He says go and sin no more lest the worst thing come upon you. That means that God is not teaching you a lesson through the bad things that are coming on you. He told the man, come on everybody, pay attention. Come on, stay with me. Imagine this. Jesus says to this person, go and sin no more, John 5, lest the worst thing come upon you. Right? Mm -hmm. So this man, assuming that he's going through problems in his life, severe challenges. Somebody can advise him and say, oh, well, you know, brother, is the Lord is teaching you a lesson. The Lord wants you to be humble. We know it's not true. Why? Because the Lord already told him, I don't want a worse thing to come upon you. So when you go out of the frying pan into the fire, that is not God teaching you a lesson. Wow. Amen. Okay. Amen. Let me take my time. Let me get I'm getting ready to pray. So you got to get this. So let's say that you lose, somebody loses your job, you lose your house. They lose your marriage. They lose your health. I mean, things are going, going down, going down. It is not God teaching you a lesson. Mm -hmm. Je Jesus said, don't allow sin to come in. Otherwise, a worse thing. This is bad. And I'm healing you. I just healed you of this bad thing. I don't want a worse thing to come. So what I'm telling you, please, is that the worst things, they are not lessons from God. Amen. No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will not be driving down the road and some rock come crashing into your car. That's the worst thing. It will not happen. I declare it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I stand to declare to you, you will not bury your children in the name of Jesus Christ. Your children will bury you and they're not going to bury you today. They will bury you in a good old age in the name of Jesus. I declare that grandparents, you will live to bless your grandchildren. May you live to bless your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. In the name of Jesus, may the King of Glory bring deliverance to you today. In Jesus' name, deliverance to your finances. Out of poverty, come into wealth. Out of sickness, come into health. Be loose. In Jesus' mighty name. How does the Lord come? The Lord comes as pillars of smoke. A pillar of cloud. He stood there as a mighty cloud. On one side he was fire. Burning the enemies. That they will not touch you. I stand to declare today. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I take divine authority over every spirit of darkness that is risen against you. I rebuke the devil in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet. Let your voice with me, somebody. Invite the king. Say to him, Jesus, I invite you into my life. One as my savior, two as my lord. You be king. Let the king of glory come here. And scatter the enemy. In Jesus name. Scatter the enemy. Do you see Jesus coming in? Do you see the king walking in? Do you see the enemy scattered? Do you see poverty bow? Do you see wealth come? Do you see sickness bow? Do you see health come? Do you see righteousness come? Come on, do you see righteousness come? And sin bow. Do you see the glory? And shame bow. Somebody lift your voice with me. 
in the name of Jesus. I need some deacons and some ministers. Please stand with me in prayer. Let's lift our voices and pray in the name of Jesus. Today, everybody I called up today to help me preach, come and join us to pray. Sister Edith, Brother Keith, Elder Maxwell, please come. If I called you or called your name out today, I want you to come and join us to pray. There's an anointing on your life. My God, Brother Emmanuel, step up. Makasa Tariandas. Come on, everybody. Church of Jesus, lift your voice and pray. The Lord save you. The Lord heal you. The Lord deliver you. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.